welcome to another episode of Snips and Snaps, the show that gives you a chance to see how English is used in everyday life. You're probably wondering what's on this poster. Well, there's a very interesting story behind it. And yes, it does have something to do with our four friends, Jasrin, Samantha, Amy and Firas. It all began about a month ago when this poster was on the school notice board. want to go on stage and receive the prize from the principal. Thank you. Thank you. Well, the athletics championships is coming up, and I really need to put more effort into my training. So, what's the problem, my friend? Need me to keep you on your toes? No, that I can do myself. I just can't get up on Sunday for my early morning jogs. What? You even have to train on Sundays? Yes, Samantha. It takes a lot of hard work and sacrifice to be the best at anything. Mm -hmm. Why not ask your mom or dad to wake you up? Yes. My mom? No way. She wants me to be responsible and independent. I have to be disciplined and get up on my own. It's all in the mind, Amy. Just tell yourself you must get up at six and you will when the alarm rings, and at 6.10, I will call to check on you. What? You must be joking, Firas. You mean you would get up at 6 on a Sunday morning just to wake Amy up? Right? Of course. That's what friends are for, right? By the way, remember that fancy Liverpool jersey? Your dad bought your brother from England last year? I like that jersey. Firas! <laughs> and we will keep pushing you during the week to train. You are, after all, a champion athlete. We want you to win. All right? That's settled. So, ladies and gentlemen, are we now going for gold? For the team and for Amy? Yes! Yes. Yeah. I'm in. Thanks, guys. One, two, three! Woo! Oh, no time to waste. We'll meet at our usual place at 4 p.m. today mm -hmm. to discuss the competition. Oh, uh, what time are we meeting again? 4 p.m. Okay, you don't have to scream. I think it was nice of Amy's friends to offer help in getting her ready for the athletics competition. And I'm sure you want to know what happened later when they met. But first, let's look at some of the English expressions our friends had just used. Here it is. Let's start with what Samantha said when they had just read the poster. Why don't the four of us get together and do it? When Samantha said, why don't the four of us get together and do it, she was actually making a suggestion. She was using this form. Why don't the four of us get together and do it? to perform the function to suggest. To suggest means to come up with an idea for someone else to consider. Samantha was suggesting that they, as a team, should take part in the logo designing competition. Let's 
let's look at another type of form and function. This time, it's Jazrin's reply to Samantha's suggestion. Thank you. If we work as a team, I'm sure we can win. Jazrin was giving hope to the team. She felt that if the four of them worked together as a team, they would have a good chance in winning the competition. Jazrin was expressing hope. Just tell yourself, you must get up at 6, and you will. So, what was Firas doing? When he said, Just tell yourself, you must get up at 6, and you will. He was giving Amy some advice on how to get up on Sunday for her jog. I used to ask my mother for advice when I couldn't decide on what dress to wear or what shoes to buy. But that was a long time ago. <laughs> Let's look at another form. Firas volunteered to help Amy. Let's see what he volunteered to do. And at 6.10, I will call to check on you. Yes, Firas volunteered to call Amy to wake her, just in case she was still asleep. Of course, Firas was hoping to get the football jersey, but we won't worry about that for now. To volunteer means to offer to do something, because you want to, maybe help someone? For example, volunteering to help your mother in the kitchen. Okay, raise your right leg. One, two, three, four, five. Now the left leg. One, two, three, four, five. Very good. Now, do your bending exercises. Come on, bend more lower. Okay. Now, run through. If that's how you run, I'm sure I can beat you. Okay, let's compete. Run from here to that tree and see who wins. Okay, but we need a starter. Let me ask that nice lady over there to help us. Excuse me, madam. Could you please do us a small favour? Okay. How can I help you? We are going to run to see who is boss. And we need you to start us off. Oh, okay. Where's the starting line? We have to run from over there to that tree. Mm -hmm. Sure. Let's go. Bye. Bye. Bye, kids. Phew, that was close. Almost blew my cover. Did you see those two in action? <laughs> I thought Firas would got a little carried away with his coaching job. <laughs> now, there were two mistakes in the sentences that Firas used. Listen to what Firas said and see if you can spot the mistakes. Come on, bend more lower! Did you spot the mistake? Yes, the mistake was more lower. You see, when you use the ER form of an adjective to compare something, you should not put the word more before it. Instead, this is what Firas should have said. Come on, bend lower! Now, let's see the second mistake. We are going to run to see who is boss. Did you spot the mistake? Yes, the mistake was in the word fast. You see, if only one person is running, then we can use the word fast. For example, Amy is fast. 
but if two people are competing, then we have to use the word faster. So, this is what Firas should have said. We are going to run to see who is faster. Now, back to our story. If you remember, they were all going to meet at the usual place to start designing the logo for the competition. Well, let's see what happened there. Hey Jasrin, are you going anywhere during the mid-term school holidays? Actually, my parents have been thinking of pull out the omen, but nothing has been confirmed yet. That should be really nice. My parents took me and my brother, Stephen and I, to pull out Stephen last year. We had so much fun snorkeling and boat riding. Ah. Pulau Cebu? Mm -hmm. Where is that? In Sarawak? No, it's actually off Johor. Isn't that odd? You know, every time I think of islands, yeah. I'll think of coconut trees, the beach, and <gasps> Robinson Crusoe. Is that the book written by Daniel Defoe? Yes! All alone, on a lonely island, with no internet, no telephone, no SMS, ah, no music! <sighs> it must have been very dangerous, and yet so exciting, for Robinson Crusoe to be living on that island for so many years. Exactly. Yes, instead of just giving up like most of us do when things go hopelessly wrong, Robinson Crusoe worked hard and took control of his life on the island. Here in Brazil, I have a good life with a successful tobacco business. So why am I then going out to sea again, especially back to Guinea? At 18, I ran away from home to be a sailor. On my second voyage, Turkish pirates attacked my ship, and I was taken hostage. I soon escaped and came here. Yes, my love for the sea is just as overwhelming now as it was then. I must go. Come on, Robinson. Where am I? A deserted island. Hello? Is there anybody here? I took all that I could to help me survive. Yes, I'll make my house here. I worked hard to make my life as comfortable as possible. This will help me count the days. Oranges! Lemons! This is good! I built another house here. Say, pretty Polly. No, no, no. Pretty Polly. Yes, yes, you did it. Twenty-two years have gone by, and I'm still here. 
I must not give up. Then one day, I rescued a man from savages. must not do that. From today onwards, we are friends and companions. I shall call you Friday on the account that I saved your life yesterday. And yesterday was Friday. Orange. Orange. Bird. Bad people. Come! Quick, we must act fast. Come. There's a small boat with... 11 men. And three of them are tied. Here, see for yourself. You are right. They are not here as friends. Let's surprise them, shall we? I am the captain of this ship. There was a mutiny on board, and the sailors have taken control. I will help you on one condition. You will take my friend and I back to England with you. Do you agree? Yes, I give you my word. My men and I are all under your command, sir. Please, master, spare us our lives. Let us stay here on your island. Very well, then. You may have all that is mine. Shall we, sir? My new coat was trying to kill me. Kill you? No, I was just trying to make sure you were fit. A coach always wants us as the, to be the best, you know. Oh, this new coach, huh? huh? No wonder. I heard you guys talking about Robinson Crusoe. Yes. yes. We were trying to put ourselves in Robinson Crusoe's shoes. Yeah. Robinson Crusoe, written by Daniel Defoe. Mm -hmm. Very good. Someone knows his such Jack. In what year did the foe write the book? 1895. Wrong! Wait, I knew it. It was... 1719. Yes. Right. I was going to say that. Right. <laughs> what I liked about Robinson Crusoe was his hard work and perseverance. I agree. He was stuck on the island, but in, instead of complaining, he tried his best to make his life comfortable. Yes. He was a survivor. Definitely. I think of the number of times we gave up when yeah. we faced problems. Yeah. Robinson time. Crusoe never lost courage. Guys, I think we had a whale of a time discussing Daniel Defoe's classic tale. <laughs> now, in the spirit of Robinson Crusoe, we better work hard at designing our logo. Oh, yeah. Well, that's <laughs> really that's nice. really cool. Isn't Thank that you. sweet? Yeah. yeah. Now, 
let's look at Robinson Crusoe again. But this time, we'll look at the main themes of this story. Courage Robinson Crusoe showed great courage when he escaped from the Turkish pirates and when he saved Friday from the cannibals. Importance of hard work Robinson Crusoe knew the importance of hard work. He built himself safe shelters. He hunted and planted crops to feed himself. He made his own tools and clothes. By working hard, he created a comfortable life for himself and was able to survive on the island for 28 years. Friendship and Loyalty After saving Friday, Robinson Crusoe took him to be his friend instead of a slave. Friday was grateful to Crusoe for saving his life and became his loyal friend. I wondered too what it would be like to be in Robinson Crusoe's shoes. Does that line sound familiar? To be in Robinson Crusoe's shoes? Can you recall who said that? Yes, it was Jasmine. We were trying to put ourselves in Robinson Crusoe's shoes. Putting ourselves in Robinson Crusoe's shoes? Did Jasmine mean this? Of course not. Jasmine did not mean that she should actually use Robinson Crusoe's shoes. She was only using an idiom. Remember idioms? Being in someone else's shoes means to be in the same situation as that person. Now, Samantha too used an idiom. See if you can find it in this sentence. Guys, I think we had a whale of a time discussing Daniel Depot's classic tale. Samantha said they had a whale of a time. No, it has nothing to do with whales or time. It is simply an idiom that means that the children were enjoying themselves discussing and imagining Robinson Crusoe's adventures. Now, there was just one more idiom that was used earlier in the program. Feeras used the idiom. Can you remember the idiom? Here. Take a look at what Pira said. See if you can spot the idiom that was used. What's the problem, my friend? Need me to keep you on your toes? Got it? Keep you on your toes? I hope this is not what Pira was asking Amy to do. You need to be a belly dancer to do this. Otherwise, it can be very painful. <sighs> That's better. What Feverus meant by keeping you on your toes was that he would make sure that Amy trained. Ah, there they are. Let's see how our friends did in the logo designing competition. a great logo design. I was sure we would win. So was I. But I think from Tutankhamun truly deserves to win. This was the best design. And to think, I was so close to going up on stage and shaking the principal's hand. Well, look at it this way. We may not have won the competition, but we enjoyed working together as a team, right? Although some of us were too busy rehearsing for the prize-giving ceremony. Ah. Hey, but look at the bright side, Amy. Thanks to yours truly, you are once again the 100 meter champion. Woo! Yeah. Thanks, Firas. I couldn't have done it without you. Congrats. Thanks. Guy, guy, guess what? Robinson Crusoe has invited you to lunch? Ugh. Look at this, an inter-class dance competition. Excellent idea, Samantha. Yes. No, 
No! No! Why not? Come on, I will take you. Well, there you have it. Interesting, wasn't it? Oops, I have got to run. Don't forget to join me, Susie Snoop, in our next episode of Snips and Snips. Bye.